Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. I am Beauty Heathen, and my channel is dedicated to a few things, but most recently I've been doing exclusively tarot readings. Tonight, I wanted to get into a reading that was requested of me um, to try to discern the truth of the situation. And it is the case the true case behind the infamous movie and book, The Messy Exorcist. Now the true case of what occurred actually happened to a boy, I believe in the 1940s. Um, his pseudonym provided by the priest was that of Roland Doe. His true name is not known, nor should it quite honestly be known, because the stigma attached to this would be both great and severe. So I'm going to go ahead and try to discern the truth of what happened. Um, as always, I shuffled my main deck off camera because it can take some time for it to get to where it needs to be. And any other decks that I use on camera, I will shuffle live. I have not looked at the deck. I have no idea what's about to come up. And so if I pause, it's because I'm trying to intuit the information I'm being given correctly. And with all of that said, here we go. Okay. Shadow. Yeah. Okay, right off the bat, I am not seeing anything to indicate demonic possession. Now, that is not to say that he wasn't possessed at all. Excuse me. Um, but I am not seeing anything demonic in nature. Which, quite honestly, I'm not going to lie, I'm not surprised at. Because, as I mentioned during the reading of the true case behind the exorcism of Emily Rose, true demonic possessions are exceedingly rare. And, quite honestly, most of the time, when there has been a true demonic possession, it usually results in the person possessed passing away. Um, let's see. I did read up a little bit on this case just so that I had some sort of background information. And I know a lot of the issues that came forward for Roland originated with the passing of his aunt. I believe her name was Helen, um, with whom he had dabbled in the occult a bit with. Apparently she had introduced him to the use of a Ouija board. Um, 
Now keep in mind that spirit boards of any nature aren't inherently evil. They can absolutely serve as a form of portal or gateway for any kinds of spirits. It doesn't have to be demonic in nature and um, you never know what you're going to get with spirit boards, which is why it's always recommended not to dabble with them, especially when you are learning how to get into divination. Spirit boards should be only used by seasoned practitioners who know how to properly and correctly protect their spaces, protect themselves, and close things correctly so that there is no transference of spiritual energy and you don't accidentally let things in that you don't want to be there. Um, so I know that his aunt had passed away and I know that caused a disruption for him because they were especially close. I don't think necessarily that hmm. not entirely sure if he was possessed. Let me keep pulling out a few more cards and see what comes up. It could very well be that through one of their uses of the spirit board, um, something may have hijacked onto him. Sacrifice. The second time a patience type card has come in. I almost get the sense in a way that the aunt's energy was protecting him. Is the devil card. Sorry, I'm trying to discern this. Um. Hmm. Let me pull out a pendulum. Because I want to see if anything comes up with this. I'm going to try to brace my arm as best as I can. Please show me yes. Counterclockwise. Okay. Please show me no. Clockwise. Okay. Was Roland Doe ever actually possessed? No. Okay. 
Okay. Did Roland Doe suffer from mental health issues? No. Okay. Were Roland Doe's wounds self-inflicted? Yes. Did Roland Doe manufacture being possessed in an attempt to gain attention for himself? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> See, what was interesting to me is that all of this, when I read a little bit up on his case, what really stood out to me was all of this transpired with the passing of his aunt, whom he was close with, and that would have triggered a lot of grief in him. And more than likely, he didn't know how to process that grief in a healthy way. Now, I know at one point his parents had him put in an insane asylum for a time and for an extended period of time priests had been performing exorcisms on him I'm getting like a very strong Wanting to believe. That belief in that this child at the time was possessed. Belief that the exorcisms were working per se um, may have also helped renew people's faith yeah sorry the room keeps gone <laughs> it's a cold day today so um I thought the room was warm enough and I turned off the heater and um, then it started getting cold again. So that's not a symptom of paranormal energy, by the way. My recording space is in the coldest room of the house in winter or fall and it's the hottest room in the house during the warmer months. So nothing paranormal, it's just it's cold day. I think his parents really did think he was possessed or really did honestly believe that they were doing their best to help him. Um, I'm getting very much a strong sense of him manufacturing things in order to get attention. And when he either grew bored with it or when he, you know, decided he'd had enough, he said, the possessing spirit is gone and literally moved on from it. Chakra. 
I get more of a sense that the priests were the ones who interfered with the author to um, provide some of the details. There is money being transferred in here, so it could very well be that there was some sort of financial gain as maybe not a primary motive, but it became a motive eventually. Destiny. Yeah. Um, I get the strong sense of them getting creative with this and blowing up the details to some degree to uh, make the book more juicy. I get the sense that any if there were previous iterations of this book that were being presented to publishers, they l were likely met with, well, this isn't interesting enough add more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was misleading. This was definitely, um, Hidden agenda. I think now as the man has gotten older, or the man today who was the boy who went through the exorcisms, I think he regrets doing it, but I don't think he'll ever speak up because, um, I think it's one of those things he'll take to his grave or if he does end up speaking any of his truth or anything it might be in like a letter in a will or something Let's see awareness emotional loss yeah, I'm just getting a lot of sense that a lot, all of this came, was how he was expressing grief. And it was almost easier to been a tale than it was to face the loss. Yeah, discontent and boredom and triumphant. As a kid, he got what he wanted and he... Yeah. Let me ask a couple of decks something. What was the motivation of Roland Doe to feign being possessed or fake being possessed?
Almost done. Thinker, father of knowledge, knowledge, instruction, reinvention. Golden Empress, potency, confidence, magnetism. Yeah, so far it looks very much like he wanted attention. Understanding, community, ingenuity. He thought this was a brilliant way to get it. Traveler, keeper of the crossroads, restlessness, independence, appraisal. Keeper of the Whispers, Curiosity, Madness, Forbidden Knowledge. Danu, Motherhood, Ferocity, Creation. This may have been even something that even his aunt may have helped him come up with the plan or idea in some way, even if it wasn't directly before she passed away. Eternal servitor, hope, incompleteness, yearning, yeah. Just get the strong feeling that the loss of his aunt really hit him hard. Championship, nobility, self-realization. Bravery, self-discipline, faith, uh, faith. Wrath, instability, suspicion. You get the sense that one or more of the priests uh, got the sense that he was, um, being honest, commitment, acquisition, responsibility. And I think before they, um, made their, um, concerns publicly known, they may have spoken to him privately and said, if this is all, you know, a joke. It's time to stop it. Mother of the Dawn, Beauty, Agency, Compassion. I get the sense that they felt bad for him. Just Reward, Evaluation, Respite. After Mediation, Communicate, yeah. Hades, equanimity, wisdom, inevitability. You keep this up no matter what, eventually. Atonement, growth, deceit. Yeah. Someone was in confession. El Shaddai, wisdom, paternalism, kindness. And Vanth, respite, assistance, memory. I do sense he went to confession after all of this to um, acknowledge and atone for this. But the problem is, if he in any way, make, shape, or form participated in helping this novel be written or anything of that nature, making it seem as though his experience was legitimate, mm -hmm. he will have reawakened the lie. But again, that's if. I don't know if it was, if he gave interviews or anything of that nature. Um, from what it has seemed like, it seems like the priests or those connected to the priests who did this have been the ones who have been the most vocal about it. So, actually, let me ask that. Let me actually ask a different deck.
Did the priest in any way make she perform purposefully mislead the public regarding Roland Doe's alleged possession and alleged exorcism? Almost done. Protection. Get the sense of protection of the church. Denial. Appearance. Have to keep up appearances that this part is real per se. Compliance. One thing, if you don't know this, when it comes to exorcism, it's not just a matter of priests doing it willy nilly. They have to get special permission um, from a higher ranking bishop or potentially even the Vatican in order to go forward with exorcism rites. Revenge, not sure where that falls in. Abandonment. Temptation. Redemption, determination, trickery. I know that there were six priests that conducted these exorcism rites on Roland. And I'm going to be honest, I feel like at least two of them, if not more, um, saw through the situation and were trying to convey that to potentially upper ranking priests who may have been among the group performing these exorcisms. And it may very well be that the compliance was the two priests that, at least two I should say, who saw through the situation were forced to comply. Um, still do not know where the revenge part comes in. They, I get the sense, wanted to stop it. The others were determined to continue forward. Persuasion, yeah. Deliverance. If we do this, then P 
people will come back to the church. Destruction of evil. Renew people's trust in the church. Purification. Endurance. Drama. And abuse. I get the strong sense of abuse of power in this. Not necessarily abuse of the child, but these are people who were respected in their religious community and if they use their positions of power to abuse the situation in order to line their coffers, as it were, or um, manipulate people into being more devout and or um, having more of a presence in the church. This, yeah. Let's see. Sorry if I'm yawning a lot tonight. It's been a very long day. <sighs> actually recording this quite late for what I normally do. I'm not quite sure what question to ask this deck, which doesn't usually happen. So I'm just going to ask it straight out. What do you have to tell us about the exorcism of Rolando? The witch, the earthly weaver of the worlds, and skull of flowers creating through the ashes. Yep. This whole fucking situation was one big con job. Community and web weaving. They wanted to draw people back to the church. Forgiveness, reducing burden. Get the sense that that was what they bestowed upon the kid. Skull of stars, infinite possibilities. Think of how much we can gain through this situation. <sighs> Trick or treat, mischief and play. Black Cat, Fortune Meets Opportunity. Every single card that I'm picking up is wrought with manipulation energy. Sweetness and synergy. Manipulation. Earth, happiness in our hearts and homes. Night Song, Hidden Talents. 
death. The internal cycle begins here. Joy, rejoicing in the moment. Skull of darkness, blind spots. What do I keep saying about blind devotion? Dawn, the light after the darkness and the lamp, remembrance. Sorry, three more. Skeleton strength, jack-o'-lantern protection, cauldron synergy and healing. That's the second synergy card that came up. I think in some weird sick and twisted way that the priest that went along with this, despite any voicing of the of um maybe two or three of the priests saying this is what this situation is. Um I think in some weird way, the they were either higher ranking or um, in a more position of power over, I would say, the two, maybe three priests that were calling this out for what it was. I think they felt in some weird way that they were helping this kid through his grief. I don't know. Anyway, I hope this reading gave some sort of insight into um, what occurred and what happened with Roland Doe. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, if you have requests for readings of this nature, please go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, I wish you all the brightest of blessings and blessed be.